For this demonstration, I'm going to be using a 20 meter single span bridge with a skew angle of 14 degrees. In cross section, we have six Y beams, each with a two meter contributing width of slab. To generate the model, we're going to use the Grillage Wizard, which has been in Lusas for quite a long time already. And we can just simply put in a few inputs in order to generate the geometry. And now going into the new functionality from version 19, if we go to our geometric section, we now have bridge deck grillage sections. So we can define what our girder is for our longitudinal section. And we've got a precast Y6 beam. For the slab, we've got two meters width per member and a thickness of 0.25 meters. Now we can put in a dimension YS, which is the offset of the center of the slab from the center of the girder. This is useful where we have uh, edge beams, where we've got an unequal width of slab either side of the beam. We can also turn on effective widths if we wish to, and we can also taper our sections. So useful for a tapering edge beam, for example, or also if we wanted to taper the effective widths. We can also define the interaction between the girder and the slab, such as whether the slab is cracked or uncracked, and also define how the slab and girder are treated for torsional properties. I'll we'll call this longitudinal beam. Using the same menu, we can also define the grillage transverse menu for the slab. Now we've got a 1.94 meter wide slab. Uh, that's our two meter width uh, multiplied by the cosine of our 14 degree skew angle. And again, it's 0.25 meters thick. Now, if we had a uh, voided slab deck rather than a beam in slab deck, we do have voided options available. And we can also define whether our slab is cracked or uncracked. And I'm going to go for cracked using the approximate method from ACI 318. We'll call it transverse slab. We now need to assign our sections to our deck. I'm going to control C to copy our longitudinal beam definition. And in the groups tab, I'm going to paste it onto the longitudinal beams. These groups have automatically been created by our village wizard. And if we see here, we can see the cross section that's been put on. We also need to assign our transverse slab property to our transverse beams and also to our end diaphragms. Now in a real structure, we'd probably have a downstand for the end diaphragm, but this being a simple quick demonstration, we've only done one transverse property. We then need to find our materials, and we can just use a material library to get our short-term concrete material property. And we've got C50-60 concrete. I'm also going to edit that and create a long-term concrete property where I'm using a third of the stiffness in order to simulate the creep deformations. A new functionality in version 19 of this is we can define grillage material properties where we could vary the material between the slab and girder if we wanted. Also, we can define whether or not stiffness and mass are introduced. So I'm going to create a dead load property where the mass is included of both the slab and the girder, but the stiffness is only included for the girder, not for the slab. So this will be used to take account of the fact that the weight of the wet concrete for the slab is taken by the girder. I'm also going to create a long-term property where I have long-term concrete for both slab and girder again, and this time I want stiffness of both of them. This will be suitable for superimposed dead loads, for example. And finally, I'm going to create a short-term property where I'm using the short-term concrete for both the slab and the girder. And this will be suitable for live loads. We then need to assign these properties to our structure. I'm just going to rename analysis one as being short-term. I'm going to select the whole structure and assign a short-term property. I'm then also going to assign the long-term property in a new analysis for long-term. and the dead load property in a new analysis for dead load. I've now switched to a model where I've defined some loads in the appropriate analyses, such as putting gravity loading in the dead load, surfacing loading in the long term, and a live load in the short term analyses. So let's look at some results. If I make the longitudinal beams the only visible,
and turn on flashing. Then turn the contours of stress. What we can see in the dead load situation is that the stress is only plotted on the beam. And if we look at a analysis where the full section is active, we can see the stress on the slab as well as on the beam. We can also combine results from across the analyses if we want to using combinations as we would for any other model.